Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And, and I will say that this is no substitute for Parliament, but I appreciate this opportunity. New Brunswick families and businesses are rapidly making adjustments to manage and live with the coronavirus pandemic. Businesses here are opening and services are being offered. Families too are preparing for summer and even planning ahead for a new school year in September. But we have a lot of work ahead of us. One notable absent is Service Canada. What is the government's plan to begin operating its service counters to assist Canadians again? The Honourable Minister. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, our government is committed to ensuring that Canadians continue to have access to the benefits that they rely on through Service Canada. We have uh, redeployed over 3,000 additional staff to ensure that Canadians continue to have access to their benefits. And we've uh, established a 1,500 agent call centre to make sure that people can uh, get access to the phone lines uh, to get the help that they need. Back to Mr. Williamson. Mr. Williamson. But Service Canada is about more than providing COVID-19 information and benefits. Provincial governments are working hard to adjust to Canada's new normal by opening up businesses and frontline government services. So when will we see Service Canada play its role and open its service counters in our communities? Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, we're currently working with our world-class public health experts to determine how best to reopen Service Canada network for the public. But make no mistake, Mr. Speaker, our uh, Service Canada employees have, gov have gone above and beyond to ensure that Canadians continue to have access to the services that they rely on and the benefits that they need. Go back to Mr. Williamson. Mr. Williamson. But please don't hide behind health experts when the Prime Minister is appearing in the middle of large protests, uh, yet is afraid to bring back the Parliament of Canada to do its business. In fact, New Brunswick legislature is, is open for regular business. Bills are being studied, opposition input heard, and MLAs are voting on legislation, not rubber stamping government bills. By comparison, our Parliament is stuck pretending it cannot function like other lawmaking assemblies. Canadians are in the dark about our country's finances. When will the government table an economic update so taxpayers understand what was spent, what is owed by our kids and, jan and grandchildren, and what the government's fiscal footing looks like? Honourable Minister. Yes, Mr. Speaker, nobody's hiding or nobody's doing anything like that. The only reason why my colleague is able to ask a question, I'm able to answer his question, is because he's right there on the screen. It's because we have this hybrid formula that cares for MPs across the country, not only the ones sitting in the House. That's right. You're here. Mr. Williamson. Uh, this is no substitute for Parliament, but I'll ask my question again. When will the government table an economic update so taxpayers understand what was spent, what is owed by our kids and grandchildren, and what is the government's fiscal footing looking like in today's environment? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, I thank the Honourable Colleague for his question. And uh, Canada's economy is still in a period of extraordinary uncertainty due to COVID-19. We have been open and transparent about the measures we have been providing for, to support families, businesses, and workers, even our health care system. Back to Mr. Williamson. Mr. Williamson. Except you have not. The Auditor General is underfunded. We have no idea about the total of government spending. So again, I'll ask, when will the government table an economic update so we can have an understanding of what the government's fiscal footing looks like? Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, we have also included bi-weekly reports to Parliament on the full cost and status of our economic response plan measures since the beginning. And I have said, and I will continue to say, that when it is, when it, it is possible to provide a clear economic projection, we will provide an update. Go back to Mr. Williamson. So what is the full cost to date? of the government's COVID-19 relief measures, as the minister just claimed she's provided to the, the government has, has provided uh, to parliament. The Honorable Minister. Mr. Speaker, we have provided support for workers. <laughs> 2.5 million Canadians have been helped through the uh, Canadian wage subsidy. We have provided businesses with some loans. 669,000 businesses have applied for these loans. Even for the CERB, we have over 8 million Canadians that have applied for this. We will now continue with Mr. Bergeron. Mr. Bergeron.